Hey everyone, uh, my name is Wes. Thanks a lot for joining me here today. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, like I said, my name is Wes and uh, I'm actually working on the Substance 3D team at Adobe. So I'm head of our uh, Substance 3D evangelism team. And so uh, I'm really excited just to uh, just to hang out and chill and talk about uh, just creating some projects and, and working in 3D. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna work, walk through like an entire project. And so we're gonna be making some holiday cookies, but uh, we're gonna do that in 3D. So why don't I just go ahead and just jump right in. So uh, what you're looking at here on my screen, this is gonna be uh, Photoshop, of course. And so this is the render of the project that I worked on. And this is what the whole stream is gonna be about. So making these uh, little substance 3D gingerbread cookies. And uh, yeah, so a lot of things went into making this. It was a fun little project, I'll say. It was just like a, a quick idea. And it didn't take long at all. I think I worked on this for like an hour. And um, and I used a bunch of different tools, like you'll see, like there was Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Firefly came in to help. Uh, there was uh, Substance Sampler, Substance Painter, Substance Stager. So a bunch of different tools. Um, but as you'll see, it's it's kind of a fun little process to kind of work through. So um, like I said, this is what we're going to work on today. This is what we're going to look at. I'm going to walk through the whole thing uh, kind of step by step. And I'm um, also checking the chat as well. So if anyone has any questions, uh, just just hit them up in the chat. Uh, uh, you know, please feel free to ask away. Uh, it's uh, not going to throw me off or anything. I'll I'll just be checking it, and um, you know, and I can just you know take the questions and kind of hit them live as we go through. So with that said, let's just jump in and start making some of these cookies here uh, in 3D, of course. Uh, so uh, the idea behind this was I really wanted to stay within like the entire like, you know, substance kind of Adobe ecosystem. And so I've been a 3D artist for, for quite some time. And so typically like looking at something like this, the way I'd approach it is like, yeah, okay, well, I've got to make a 3D model to start. Um, and usually I'd use like a 3D program. And so 3D programs uh, for me, like I've been using... Um, Maya for a, for a long time. Uh, also was using Blender as well uh, from time to time. Uh, lately in the last year or so, I've been using Cinema 4D a lot, which has been really cool. So I was kind of new to that software. It was fun to learn that. So, you know, typically, I guess I would think like, oh, let me let me start in a program like that. Um, but in this case, what I wanted to do was like, ah, you know, I, that's kind of overkill. Maybe uh, I don't really want to jump in and I don't really want to start modeling, like, you know, point by point modeling stuff, you know? So I was like, well, well you know, let's just do this all through you know, using like, say, starting with something like Illustrator. So that's where I'm going to start. And we're going to jump over here to Illustrator. Now, please don't laugh <laughs> because I'm not a good with Illustrator. Um, I've, I've used it in, you know, in, in my career, but not very often. Uh, so this was like the best I could do. Uh, so I jumped into Illustrator. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try to make this cookie. And, and for me, this was fun because it was like, you know, I was kind of using this to learn Illustrator as well. Um, so what I did was I just jumped in and I'm sure everyone who's watching probably already knows Illustrator very well. But like, you know, my idea was like, OK, I want to make this little gingerbread cookie uh, and I need to make like a basic shape. And so, you know, I could do like I said, I could do this in like a 3D program. Maybe I would plot like a curve and then try to like, you know, use some, you know, tools to like you know, apply some polygons or something like that. But sometimes, like I said, that's a pain. And I wanted to be able to just jump into something like say Illustrator and just work through and, you know, plot these points around. So I set up these points and then I was thinking, okay, I'm going to rely on the, the 3D extrusion tool here in Illustrator just to get me a base mesh. And so that ended up being a, a, a perfect tool, especially in this uh, situation here. So uh, let's take a look at how that works. So once I have like this, this shape, uh, I come over here to my window and I'm going to grab 3D and materials. And so now you have this tab and you can see there's a couple options. We have objects, materials, and lightings. Um, there's a lot of really cool things this can do. Uh, for example, you can add materials. You are using substance materials to this. There's lighting that you can do. In my particular case, um, I wasn't really interested in, in this part. So I was thinking, okay, well, I know the materials. I'm doing that in substance. So And the lighting and rendering, I'm going to take care of that. But what can I do with this object? So once I had the path, I grabbed this little extrude option. So I clicked extrude and you can see that it, it already extrudes the shape. And it gives me this little manipulator, uh, which lets me rotate this around. So uh, what I'm kind of doing here is I'm coming through and maybe this is a little bit different than the way you've seen this uh, described before. So maybe I, I, I would assume like when you've seen this before on Adobe Live, maybe it's like 
thinking about this tool set from a 2D illustrator's perspective. So what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm going to talk about it from a 3D illustr a 3D designer's perspective. Like what how would I use this? And so for me, I was like, okay, well I'm using this tool. This lets me kind of navigate around like I would be used to doing in like my 3D program. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, this works. I've got extrude. I've got a couple things here. Uh, one things that I found helpful was like, so this tool for me, uh, from a 3d perspective, it was like, ah, it's kind of easy to get lost in this because it's, it's got a little bit of a delay to it. So one of the things that I found was really nice was this preset. So for example, in this case, I just used like this quick off axis front preview, and it just gave me a quick look at the, at the mesh. And like I said, my whole goal behind this was I just need to get a mesh that I can then take into substance. So the next thing that I did was um, I looked over, I was like, okay, well, I have the depth. How, how thick is this? Maybe I don't need it to be 50 pixels. Let's try 25. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we had this bevel option. So this was awesome. Uh, excuse me. Uh, awesome. So I turned on bevel and then you have a bunch of options here. The one that worked great for me was this rounded uh, shape. So you can see now that I'm trying to like, you know, puff up my gingerbread man here, like uh, like he's been in the oven and it's cooking and, you know, I'm kind of puffing this guy up. And one of the things that's kind of neat is, is if I, as I start to rotate this around, you'll see that there is a flat side. So it's just like the cookie itself was sitting on the pan and it was baking. And then I kind of rotate here and here's where the, you know, the dough, I guess you would say is kind of rising. So this is pretty good. Uh, I was pretty happy with how that worked. So then I was like, okay, well, let's just play around with the height. You know, I just got to kind of get this into position. Let's just keep playing with that width. So I'm just kind of, you know, rounding out that edge. And overall, looking at this, this was kind of giving me the result that I wanted. Now, I'll tell you something else I did at this point. I was like, okay, this is giving me my basic shape. Uh, but I knew that I was going to be able to take this into a, another one of our substance applications. So uh, the, the point of that being that instead of doing just one-sided, bevel there's an option here where you can bevel bevel both sides so i just did that uh and then i was able to go in and just play with this width to kind of really smooth this guy out uh and so this is the result that i was kind of getting here and at that point i was like okay this is this is good it's not you know i'm gonna worry about that flattened part in a different substance tool so for now i just wanted to use this width to kind of soften all the edges and so once I had that, what you can do is, is you just scroll down and there's an option here to export the 3D object. And then you have like your two different assets. So I have the, the cookie asset uh, and then we can export that. So when you come down to your export settings, I gave it a name and then you have your formats. And in terms of the 3D object, uh, a couple things that I thought was really cool was, okay, well, I have OBJ, that's good. I typically don't like using OBJs because uh, you know usually I'm using like FBX for materials. But in this case, when I'm just looking at geometry, OB OBJ is fine. It's very lightweight. There's not a lot of crazy information and all the points and everything. So uh, it's, it's, it's a basic format, but it, this is totally going to get the job done. There's also some options here for like USDA and Z. So these are really nice formats. And you have G GLTF as well, also really good formats. Uh, GLTF is really good for sharing with web. And then also kind of a, a neat tidbit, if you're using After Effects at all, with the new After Effects, there is a new 3D import capability so it works with gltf so the reason why you might be thinking well which one of these would you choose right so for me in this particular case like i said obj gives me the basic model but if you were coming over to say like the layers uh oh, hold, actually sorry about that let me grab my three toolbar again if i was using the materials like for example if i grabbed uh i don't know just one of these materials like this sand one here and i applied it you can see that it's now giving me like some type of material to this. And then if I wanted to take this, get rid of that little tip, and I export my 3D object, and instead of OBJ, if I change this to GLTF, this is going to export as a GLTF, meaning that like the file that you get, you could drop this right into After Effects. You could take this right into Substance Stager. And the texturing that you see here, that's going to be uh, that's going to be part of the model. So it's really great to do that. But like I said, in my case, I didn't want to do that. I was just going to use OBJ. So I didn't really care about the material or anything. So that was going to give me my 3D model. And I just exported that out and we'll, we'll come back to that guy in a moment. Then for later in the stream, you'll notice that I have this little tree. So I also just created this quick little tree and extruded it. Same exact process, just beveled it and then exported this out as an OBJ, which I'll use a little bit later once I get back into Stager. So let's take a look at what I actually did with the 3D object itself. 
So in this case, what I wanted to do was a little bit of tweaking to this. So I relied on a tool that we have called Substance Modeler. And that is a tool that is makes it really, really easy to create models. But I'll tell you one thing that doesn't work really well with it right now is creating a complex shape like this, uh, where you have a very specific outline. So in that case, using Illustrator to kind of help me with the limitation Modeler has in this kind of path tool, because it doesn't have a pen tool. So I was able to use Illustrator to create my path very easily, uh, extrude it, and then I took it into Modeler. So let me show you what that looks like. So here I had this little video. Now I'm on a Mac. I've been doing a bunch of 3D on Mac recently uh, for Substance. Substance works really good on Mac, uh, native support for Apple Silicon. So you get a lot of great performance. However, this tool that I'm showing here is not on Mac yet. So this is on the PC side. Now this, we are building this for Mac. So that'll be, you know, stay tuned for some future news on that. But what I wanted to show right now is just what I'm doing in this tool. So first off, you'll notice that, you know, I brought in this little shape. Again, this is the OBJ that was coming from Illustrator. And once this comes in, I do this little option called convert to clay. And so it does this little conversion piece here. And what this does is it creates a new mesh. And this mesh is, is what we call a, a voxel mesh. So the cool thing about that is, and I'll just kind of go off on a small little tangent here. The cool thing about it is you're basically working with, that's why we call it clay. Just think of it like you're working with clay, like with your hands. You know, I can, I can mesh and mold the clay and create what I want. Uh, typically in like another app, like say it was Blender or Maya or something like that, I'd be working with polygons, points and edges and all that kind of stuff. And that's a lot more complex. But here in Modeler, we don't do any of that. So watch this. I have this, this mesh here. Uh, I can jump over here. You can see I'm just increasing or decreasing the clay resolution. So that's what this little checkerboard is showing. I'm decreasing it a little bit. I uh, then go over to this little smooth tool that I have. I enable smooth and I just start smoothing out some of these faceted edges that you see here. So I turn on my symmetry tool and you'll notice that what I do now is I go in and I just kind of smooth some of these edges out like this. And uh, this makes it a nice clean mesh. Now, again, I'm fast forwarding a little bit here. You can see I'm just smoothing out all my edges. This is what my little cookie guy looks like at this point. Now, like I said, I wanted to create that little edge that is going to be the part where the cookie was laying right on the uh, the pan. So now you'll see this little box I've created. This is my eraser tool. This is really great because like with Modeler, I'm like, okay, I'm working with clay. I want to subtract clay. This is like in real life. I'm just taking like a knife tool or something and just scraping the clay off. So in another 3D program, yeah, I could use Booleans or something like that. But here I don't have to worry about the polygons or anything. I just set the clay where I, you know, set the least subtraction point. I hit the space bar and then boom, I just subtract that. And look at this nice, really great clean edge that I got. So even the export out of Illustrator wasn't giving me like super clean geometry. You know, it, it, was, it was good. It was, it was going to be fine, but it wasn't like super clean that I wanted. So that's why I just took this into Modeler. Uh, again, just to kind of try the convert to clay and just playing around with tools and stuff like this. And now you can see I'm kind of smoothing this out around the edges just to, you know, make it, you know, it's always great when you have your 3D model, you have a nice little bevel edge because it really catches light. And so that's kind of all I'm doing right here. So you can see that it's a real simple visual process. Now, this little window here, you can see that this is when I'm exporting the mesh out. And I just want to talk about this really quick. Uh, so from here, what I can do is I can export the mesh out and I can set like a target range, like how many, because at the end, we worked with something called voxels, but in the end, we export a mesh that has points and edges and all that stuff. So we can set like a, a, a target polygon count here. Uh, and we have some presets. So you can see I use the Substance Painter preset. Uh, there's also another option here called Generate UVs. And what that does, and in case you don't know, if you're if you're kind of new to 3D or just checking this out, um, in order to, well, here, we'll get into that in a minute. Let me jump over to Substance Paint. It'll make more sense. All right, so uh, that's it. I just did this little export, and that was my model. So now let's jump over to Substance Painter, and let's take a look at how I can texture this guy in Painter. So here's the gingerbread cookie, and there goes my dog. Hopefully, you guys aren't hearing that. I knew my son comes home from his bus ride right about now, and the dog goes crazy. Uh, but let's just turn off my texturing that I have. So this is my cookie, and I have two little materials here. There's a front and a back. So if I turn off the back, you can see like this is the back. This is the flat piece. We'll get to that in a second. And then here's the front piece. So a moment ago, I talked to you about like the UVs, right? So if I look at this 3D, 2D split view, a UV, and we won't get too crazy into it, but think of it like this. It's just a 2D representation of your 3D object. And the reason why you have it 
It's like, uh, I like to think of it like wrapping paper. You, you have a box. Hey, it's, it's Christmas time. We're talking about the presents, right? So I have a box and I, and I want to apply a texture or let's say a wrapping paper to this box, which is a 3D object. Well, as you recall, you know, you'll lay out the paper, you'll fold and place it onto the box, and then you'll use some tape and tape it down. So the tape and the that process is kind of like the uvs here it's basically like when i paint something on a 3d model the uvs is like showing how that little piece of paint or that that detail that i'm adding how it gets mapped to the 3d object and that can be a very technical process it's not fun uh some of us crazy 3d people like myself i actually enjoy the 3d process i usually put some headphones on and just you know jam to some tunes and 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 do that but what you can do, though, is when you create a new project in Substance Painter, you can just click this auto unwrap button. Now, there are some options here, but you'll just probably leave all that at default. So let's say you know nothing about any of this stuff I'm talking about. Don't worry. You export a model right out of Illustrator. You can drag it here into your new project. Click this button and then click OK. And then pff, Painter takes care of the rest. You don't have to worry about it. Now, uh, Illustrator will also create some of these UV coordinates for you behind the scenes too. So maybe they're good enough in that case as well, but the painter will take care of that. Okay. So with that said, we now have, uh, you know, everything set up for my project. So let's get into the actual part of, of, uh, you know, checking out how we can texture this guy. So with that said, and like I said, we're going to do this step by step. First things first, I want to apply a material to this and I need, I wanted to make this a gingerbread cookie. So I need some type of gingerbread cookie material. Where can I get that? Right? So one thing you can do is if you jump over to the creative cloud desktop tool and you go to stock and marketplace 3d, uh, you can, we have thousands and thousands of materials, uh, that you can grab here that you can use in your painter projects. However, if I do, let me just look, uh, I think I did look, but I did. Yeah, there is a cookie material. I definitely don't want this. And in this case, it doesn't look very good. Uh, but there's, oh, look, there are some gingerbread um, cookies here I could have used. Um, but they don't have the material that I wanted. So I was like, oh, no problem. It's going to make it myself. So we have a tool called Substance Sampler, which is really awesome. And so that tool allows you to create a 3D material from a single image. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump over here to sampler. And this is the, the material I'm going to create. I'll show you how we do this step by step. So how, so one of the things that we can do with this is that, um, I can just take an image, right? So it could be something I download from the web or it can be, you know, usually I just use my phone and I go take a picture and usually, uh, my family, my wife has these gingerbread houses that we, we didn't make them yet. So I didn't, I thought, oh, I know I'm just going to go downstairs and snap a shot of the gingerbread house and use that as my material. We didn't have it. So we didn't have, I didn't have any materials I could, and I didn't want to download something from like a, a Google search. However, I then jumped over to uh, Firefly here and uh, I was able to generate what I wanted from this. So let me grab, I do have a little prompt that I used uh, and I'm kind of new to using these prompts. So you can see here what I've got. Uh, so yeah, whoops, let me delete that. So this is what I did. Gingerbread texture. I did. I just tried this flat, top down, close up, no icing, no cuts. I wanted a high quality photo and I hit generate. And I just was curious to see what this is going to do. And so for me, this was like an experiment as well. And so you'll, you can see it takes, you know, uh, you know, several seconds here, but like it goes through and it creates something. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. This one right here, this is pretty good. So I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. Uh, and I could go and regenerate this, but this is perfect. So what I did in this case is I just clicked the button here and I just did download and I saved this as an image. Uh, and that's what I did. And, oh, this one would have been pretty good too, but you can see this is giving me some type of texture. So that's how I use gingerbread, uh, sorry, gingerbread. That's how I use Firefly to get my gingerbread material, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, so let's look at how we use that in sampler. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to come over here to my project and I'm going to create a new material. And so that's just going to keep everything blank. And then what I can do here, let me come over to my desktop. Let's see where I have this. Bear with me just a second. Look, I'm just checking my other monitor really quick. There it is. Drag him over here. Um, this is the texture that I was able to, oops, excuse me about this. This is the texture I was able to generate in one of the times. This one was really good uh, out of Firefly. I really like this one. So what I'm going to do now is grab this guy and I can drag and drop it right here into Sampler. And Sampler's like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. 
you have an image and you want to turn it into a material. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And it does it using uh, our machine learning algorithm. So I was like, okay, let's do that. Um, so I click import and uh, sampler just, uh, you know, starts, starts its business. It just does it. And so um, it creates a, a base material, imports the texture, and you can see here that it then generates the material. So now I have a material here. And if I look, I have a 3D view, which is just a default model. Uh, you can use different models. This is just uh, our meat mat little substance icon guy that I'm using here. And uh, so this is just here for me just to get an idea of what this looks like. It, it really means nothing. I'm really concerned over this 2D section. So what it did was it created for me a color map. It created for me this normal map. If you're using, if you if you've done three D before, you'll be like, oh yeah, normal. Well, wow, it generated a really nice normal map for me. So that's awesome. Uh, it creates uh, this. If you don't know what this is, normal. Just think about it like it's like a, uh, it's like an image that lets the materials when they're rendering just understand kind of like overall kind of like shape and form and the tactile feel, like the bumpiness of it, basically, we'll say. Then you have this roughness, which describes like the gloss, the surface, microsurface, like, you know, how light reflects off of it. So is it really shiny? Is it reflective? That kind of thing. Metallic. Well, we definitely hopefully are not having any metallic in our gingerbread material. Uh, and then you have a height, which is also like the bumpiness. Uh, ambient occlusion, some of this kind of shading in these dark areas. So that's what it does. It produces all this for me, which is great. So then what I do in this nice layer stack is I just kind of build up the material. So let's look at this. If I hit T on my keyboard, it takes me to tiling. And I can see that I need this to be a seamless image. And it's not. There's some seams. So this is like in Photoshop. If I do a filter offset and kind of put this around, uh, you can see that, okay, well, this doesn't repeat very well on the surface. And I can see that on my 3D model. Uh, you know, oh, look, I got a terrible seam here. There's one right across the front. Uh, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just in my layer stack, I am going to do a search for a filter called tiling. And this gives me a little transform tool and I can just interactively adjust this guy and it tries to repeat and, and, and uh, this image so that I can tile it. Now, just to show you what it's doing, if I click this show seam button, you get this like crazy wiggly lines. This is showing me like where the images are being cut and pasted together. So again, it's very much like if you've done this in Photoshop where you do filter offset and then would clone stamp out where the offset is happening. It's like you're doing that process, except this helps you automate that whole step. So this is what the seam looks like. If I go to the edge, I can do things like adjust the threshold. Uh, in this kind of material, breaking this up based on the underlying shape and form so it's able to read that kind of data, this really helps me to hide that, that seam. So check this out. If we zoom in really close, I can sort of see the seam, but what I'll do is just come in and just introduce a little bit of blur to that. And that just kind of blurs that for me automatically. So now you can see that seam that we had here on the face, the one outside the look, the, the, if you recall, the one we had right here on his leg, gone. Perfect. So now I don't have to worry about any of that, which is really, really cool. So the next thing that we want to do, I've taken care of the tiling to this. Uh, what else could I do? Let's see. If I zoom out a lot, I can start to see some repeating patterns. Like there is a little bit of this kind of, weird balance between my this, this highlight and some of the shadowing. So typically for a material, I will grab my equalize filter and throw that in. And what that does, if I zoom out, here's what it looks like with it off. So if you'll notice, you can see there's a little bit of, now we're getting kind of this like checkerboarding kind of white haze. And if I, and that's just the discrepancy between kind of some light and dark values in the image. But if I equalize it, I turn it back on, boom, it just balances it out. So it just helps with that process and I can dial this up and down. So I just did something like that. Looks pretty good. And then the last thing is some quick cleanups. So for example, and I won't do all of them, but you, I'll notice like, oh, there's little specks here. Sometimes you want those, but sometimes they can be like, if I zoom out a lot, they can be very uh, repeatable patterns. So I think this little area here is the worst. So what I'm going to do is I could do a couple things. I could do a clone stamp. But I could also do, we have a content aware fill inside a sampler as well. So I'm going to grab that tool. I'm just going to paint this little area and that's it. You can see it processes and it's going to do the content aware fill and there it goes. So that's, that's all I got to do. If I wanted to maybe paint out a few of these other areas, you can see that I'm just going in and just uh, tapping here to just, you know, select a few areas and then let content aware fill do its thing. 
So uh, it takes a little bit to process depending on, you know, the size of your image and, and what you're kind of working on. But, but what it does is just like what you've seen it do in Photoshop, it'll just remove those artifacts. And like I said, this is going to cook for a little bit, um, but uh, it's going to take care of those artifacts for me. And boom, there it is. So now I have my material, which is awesome. If I want to check this in my 3D view and maybe increase my tiling so I could tile this like four times. So the more and more I repeat it, now it's starting to look more like that little gingerbread material that I want. And I don't see any seams. This looks awesome. And you can see with just a little bit of effort, uh, I went from you know a completely generated image from Firefly to a material and sampler. And now I can just click this little export button and I can send this right into Painter. So I would just click that and it sends it right into Painter. So what's happening is under the hood is the substance tools is now uh, and it's funny because we do use this terminology, but it's perfect for the cookie stuff I'm doing. But we it's baking <laughs> that material into an actual material, and it's going to send it over to Painter. And again, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it won't take a long time. It's usually you know, a matter of seconds. Um, but I have one already set up, so I don't know. I'll give it a couple more seconds. We'll see what it does. But we don't need to fully wait on it. I can jump back over to Painter. One other thing I'll say, too, is at the top here, you have this. Uh, see, it's done now. At the top, you have this resolution. So substance tools are always resolution independent. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I jump down to like something ridiculous, like 128 pixels by 128 pixels. And uh, I'm probably going to regret doing that because I have content aware filling all this stuff. But I'll show you what it does because uh, it's going to take a while to process. But what happens is, is everything is non-destructive. So all this work that we've done, now that base image is 2048. That's not changing. That 2048 is what I brought in uh, that was coming out of, I believe, what I saved from Firefly. And then I have like, you know, one, all this stuff gets recomputed and I've got this terrible resolution. Now, because this is substance, I could jump this up to like 4K. Let me do, I'll do something, well here, let's just go back to 2K while I'm talking. So I, I hit 2K on this and it's gonna redraw basically is what Sampler does, it just redraws everything and it redraws all this data. So uh, it's gonna give me a true 2K image. So again, with Substance, you never have to worry about resolution. It, you can move up and down the stack. So you'll notice that I got all my resolution back. So can you imagine like in Photoshop, if I dumped all that resolution down and saved it and that came back, you, it's gone. Like you're not gonna go from 128 and get all this detail. So Substance can do that. Now, something else you'll notice too is like, yes, but that image you brought in, isn't that scaling up and down? And yes, that is true. That is doing that. However, I didn't show it here, but we do have this really cool filter called Upscale. This is using a new machine learning AI uh, algorithm that will take, like if I wanted to generate that image from Firefly, let's say it came in at like 1K and I wanted to say, okay, I am going to upscale this to 4K. I would run this Upscale filter after the import of the file so that it then uses AI to upscale, like super resolution in Photoshop. Then I can do my procedural stuff on top of it, which is really cool. I didn't need to do it in this case, but I just wanted to let you know that it's there. Okay, so we sent that over to Painter. What's next? Let's jump back over to Painter. So now I have my material. It says untitled because I didn't title it, but I do have one already that I did title that I want to use, which is this one. So I even saved this one out as a material because it, it turned out well, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it because I think I'm gonna reuse this in other projects. Um, okay, so. Next things, uh, next step, what do we do? Never mind about this back. I'll show you about that in a, late, a little bit later. So I need to start my texturing process. Here's another thing that we do. I have a layer stack here in Painter. And this isn't going to be like a tutorial on how to use Painter per se. We have lots of, of other training content on that. And then also, please hit me up on any of my social accounts. I always love talking about this stuff. So if you have questions or you have any tutorial requests, even on my own YouTube channel, I do a bunch of tutorials. So um, let me know. But for here, I just want to get into like some other cool techniques of Painter. So like you have a layer stack, right? And I have a front material, and then which is this guy, the front. And then I have a back material which is just the back. And I split those in two pieces because I wanted to be able to maximize as much resolution as possible to the back and as much as I could to the front. And that's why I split those into two materials. And then what I would do is I jump over here to my texture set settings, and this is gonna be funny, but I would actually bake the, the scene. <laughs> and it's a cookie, so it, it, it's funny how this works out, but you really would do this all the time in Painter. So what this does is, and I'm going to hit this bake, select the textures button. Actually here, let me jump this up to like a higher resolution. I'm going to bake something called a thickness, a position, a curvature, an ambient occlusion, a world space. All that sounds crazy. You can see what it's doing as it's baking this out. All it's doing is it's taking information about the 3D model and it's saving it into an image. 
like a 2D image, like, and that's what these little things are, like an image that represents world space normals or an image that represents ambient occlusion, stuff like that. It looks like I'm probably getting some bugs or something here. But once it does all that, the whole process is I'm just doing it so that I, it just helps aid me in the texturing process. And that's the only reason why I'm doing this. It just helps me using different generators and filters and painter. But you can see it's just part of the, the, the Substance Painter project setup. So I would just bring in my 3D model, do a quick bake, and, and I'm, I'm good to go. So uh, this is taking just a little bit. There we go. It's almost done. What's really cool is I can interact with this window as it's doing it and get an idea. So it's finished. I return to my painting mode, and then here's here's my guy. And you can see that what it's doing, there's a little bit of shadowing in here. That's what that bake information did. Okay, let's finally get to some texturing stuff, okay? So we have that gingerbread material that I created. Uh, so I'm just going to drag and drop and just add this to my layer stack. Whoops, that's my smart material. Let's. I, I, this is the one that I want to do. And never mind what I said about a smart material. All it is is like a smart object in Photoshop. It's like a collection of layer stack. So just like you would have a collection of filters, so that's all it is. So what I did, this is the exact material that I exported from uh, Sampler uh, last week when I made this, and this is the material. And it comes in like this, and it looks really cool. So I was like, wow, this is perfect. A uh, couple things that I don't like about it is uh, it's a little too shiny. So what I'm going to do is quickly run like a little levels effect on this, and I can say, okay, well, what channel do I want to work with? Well, I want to work with my roughness information. And I'm just going to use my levels and just knock this brightness down slightly. So I just did that just to kind of, and I could have done that in sampler, but I just really didn't worry about it because I know I can tweak it inside of painter. So I just did that. All right, perfect. Now, if I wanted to tile this, I could, so I could repeat this by two. So I did that and that repeats everything here by two. Now, the next thing I can do that's really cool about this is I can start to uh, maybe, so one of the idea was like for my gingerbread guys, like I'm going to have some icing and I want to do like his eyes, his mouth, uh, give him some uh, gumdrop buttons. <laughs> if you remember that from Shrek, the, the guy, remember the, the cookie guy was like, not my gumdrop buttons, you know. Um, I kept thinking that in my head the whole time I was making this. So I, I still stuck in my head, unfortunately. Uh, so you have these little gumdrop buttons, right? And I want to, you know, have that, but I didn't want to model it in. I wanted to be able to do that inside of my, um, I want to just do it in Painter. So what you can do is if you jump over to your uh, shader, you can actually displace. So I uh, increased my subdivision count and I uh, here, which means it's just basically uh, increasing resolution on the 3D model. So I can actually paint with displacement. And I'll show you what that means here in just a moment. But first, I have my cookie here. And what I want to do is I need to go in and I need to start, um, maybe I want to add a little bit of brownness around the edges. So to do that, I created a fill layer. And we're just going to call this edges. And I'm going to start with color. And it's white, but we're going to change this to like, say like a, a brown or something like this. And just like in Photoshop, I can I have all these blending modes available to me. So I'm just going to multiply this blending mode down. And we'll, it's hard to see what's going on. So we need to mask this. So again, like in Photoshop, I'm just going to add a layer mask. So I just create a, a black mask. Now I could come into here with my paintbrush and just start painting here uh, around the edges like this on the 3D model, but that's kind of a pain. And here's where I start using a lot of my tools from, from uh, Substance uh, Painter. So I'm going to use a generator and I'm going to use this one called UV Border Distance. So I'll click this. And what it does, if I look at the mass that it's generating, it's creating this little mass for me. And I can play around with things like the balance, uh, smoothness, distance, and all this kind of stuff. But if I look at what it's producing for me now is this little nice kind of browned edges. So just like that, that's how I did that in my um, for my cookie. And then it's set to multiply. I can drop my layer opacity if I want to here like this. So maybe I'm just going to slightly drop that or change the color. Okay, so at that point... Uh, I now have that in place. And let's start looking at, at painting the icing now. And uh, I'm going to do this from scratch. So let's start off by making a, a material for the icing. And so to do that, I create a new fill layer. And you can see that just fills everything. And we'll call this, uh, this is going to be my base, right? So this is the base of the icing. And I call this a material because a fill layer is made up of several channels. And all those channels combined together can make a material. Now, one thing I'm noticing, and you'll notice from a layer stack, this is operating from the bottom up. Well, I've added a material, but why do I still see the detail of the cookie underneath of it? Sometimes you want that, but in this case, I don't. This icing is, is like another material on top of uh, what the gingerbread material is. 
So by default, the painter is trying to combine and mix layers constantly. And what you can do, it's a little complicated, so I'll just kind of briefly go over it. You have all these channels. Uh, each channel that you have has its own blending mode. Well, what I need to do is if I look at my height information, the blending mode is set to linear dodge or add mode. So it's just adding what's underneath of it. And I don't want that. So if I look at my base color, it's set to normal. Well, the quick way to handle this is I just right click, I go to blending options and I say, hey, apply the blending mode normal to all the channels. And when I do that, I now have what I want. I have a layer that's on top of another layer. And this is like my icing. And for the icing here, what I'm going to do is uh, come over here to my roughness and, and just push this up. So now it gives me kind of this more rough surface because uh, I don't want to be like that kind of icing yet. It's going to, you know, it's going to have a little bit of roughness to it. So then I have my icing. Now, one of the things is this effect that I'm building up, it's going to take multiple layers. So I'm going to create a folder and we'll call this icing. And let's take this base and throw it in the folder. Oh, shoot. Look at this. I have the same problem again. I always do this. I always forget. Uh, so again, <laughs> the separate blending modes for the folders, which is really powerful. But again, everything is set to blend. So I want to right click again and just say, hey, you know what? I didn't mean to do that. Uh, apply this blending mode to all channels for the folder. So I did it on the layer, but I really should have done it on the folder. Then I'm just going to mask the folder. So we add a black mask. And now I can just add a paint effect into here. And now I can start to just paint. So if I paint, there's my icing. However, that does not look like cool, good, nice icing. It doesn't look good. It looks like I just painted a mask. So it's pretty terrible. So now let's start to play around with what we can do with this. And you'll notice that, whoa, look at this. It looks like it's pushing into the surface. Well, if I jump back over here to that base and I take my height information and I push it up like this, this is what I was talking about with that displacement. I can actually displace that geometry. So now instead of having to model that by hand, I can paint that displacement right here in Substance Painter. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted to do. But we need to do some, you know, some work to this because it's not looking great so far. So this is the mass that I'm creating here. Now, what I'm going to do is I have my paint stroke. And this is one of the things I love about Substance Painter is like, like I'm building up what we call an effect stack. So I can do some neat things with this. So first off, what I'm going to do is inside this mask, I'm going to add a filter. And for the filter, I'm going to grab a blur. And so we're just going to blur this. OK, so now I'm blurring the mask. And then what I'm going to do after I blur the mask, I'm going to come into here and I'm going to add a levels effect on top of it. And now I can do something like take like my output black and white and just start to tweak these guys. So let's take the the uh, I'm sorry, the input black. Move it in. Let's take the gamma, move it like this. And again, just kind of tweaking and changing these values. And now I'm getting something that looks like that, which looks more like the icing that I want. That's pretty cool. And again, everything's non-destructive. So I can jump back to this base layer and say, okay, well, it's it's a little too rough. Maybe I'm just going to, you know, decrease the, the roughness value slightly just to get a little bit more of a reflectivity. You know what? I don't want to do that because I'm going to do something else instead. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so now I'm starting to get that, but we've built this effect up inside a folder. So this is like the first part of the icing. Let's do another effect on top of it. We're always building on top. So I'm going to grab another layer. Let's go to our height information only. And this is going to be my uh, grooves, I'll call it. Okay, so same process. I am going to apply a mask to this. And now I'm going to put a fill layer into this. This means I can fill it with a map, like some kind of texture. And then I jump over to my asset library here in Painter. And I'm going to do, oh, here, let's just look through here and see. There was one specific that I want to use. It's uh, this guy, Creases Soft. Just like a grunge procedural map that ships in Painter. And I can just use this. So I'm just going to drag and drop and just place it right here onto this guy. And then we'll jump over to the height information. And then I'm just going to increase the height information. Okay, now it's hard to tell what's going on. But the reason why is because I just need to repeat this little map. And there's lots of settings here, but I'm just going to repeat this by like, let's say four. Nope, not enough. Let's do 12. Oh, there we go. Now I'm starting to get some grooves in here. It looks pretty good. Let's do 24 maybe. Ah, there we go. Perfect. All right. So now if I go back, I can adjust that height information. So I just want to get a little bit of some, you know, groove into that. Now what I've basically built up is if I go to my paint tool and I start to paint now, I've got this little icing tool here that I've made like this. So pretty cool. And that's how I did the icing. So if I wanted to do like his eyes, I could do like this, this, and draw his mouth in here and so on and so forth. 
Um, so one other thing I'll do with this though, is for that icing is, uh, let's see, I have my grooves. Uh, I want to add some little, uh, kind of like sugar specs in here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, create another fill layer and we'll call this specs. And this time I'm just going to look at roughness information. I'm going to make it super shiny like this. So you can look, it almost looks wet now. And then I'm going to add a mask, add a fill. This is something you're doing all the time in painter. And then I'm just going to, again, jump over to some of these uh, grunge maps and try to find one. Maybe this dirt, maybe this one, dirt five randomness. Let's try that. I'm going to alt uh, or alter, let's see, option click on the mask so I can kind of see it. Oh, I definitely don't want that mask. Let's do dirt three. Okay. I'm going to increase my balance and contrast. This will make sense here in just a moment when I start to get this guy going. So what we're going to do is repeat this by a bunch. So maybe something like that. Increase the contrast. There we go. Okay. Now, if we look, what we've done, and if I zoom in kind of close, you can see, and I think it's hard to see because it's repeating so much. So let's set this to like maybe six. There we go. So now if I move my, my light around in my scene, you're starting to get some of these little like crystal speckles in the icing. And another kind of cheat with this, this is going to sound disgusting, but I'm going to throw some metalness into it. <laughs> so if I just add a little bit of a metal value, that just kind of makes it stick out. So yeah, I know that sounds horrible. I'm putting metal flakes in the icing. Uh, I'm probably going to get in trouble. You know, like you're, you're definitely not selling these cookies, but that's all what 3D is all about. It's cheating reality, right? So yeah, that just makes it stick out. It's kind of a trick I do a lot. So now I have my light, my icing in place. And if I go over here to my paint, uh, let's take a look at this guy. So now we can paint with the icing. Oh, you know what? I think it's um, it's 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 too it's sticking up too far. So it's no problem. I could just jump over to let's say that base height. Again, everything's non-destructive, so I can just make changes. I'm just going to lower it slightly, so get something like that. All right, perfect. Uh, so then what I can do, like I said, is just go in and use my paint tool and just kind of paint this guy. You know, just, this is exactly what I did. And then just, you know, paint, paint his eyes into here, paint his mouth. Uh, something else you can do with this paintbrush, like if you jump over to like, here, I'll show you this real quick. If I did, I think I made a, I made a brush for this. So we'll do icing, is it under, yeah, this one. So this one, if you look, and, and what's cool about our brushes is we ship with like a ton of uh, Photoshop ABR brushes and you can just import your own as well. But what I've done here is I just went to the brush and I set just some jitter effects to like the size and angle and position. So this just gave me a little bit of a better look. So now when I started to paint, you can see how that looks just a little bit better like icing, you know? Uh, and that's that's just kind of what I did to get the effect for the icing. So now I'm just kind of painting that on. And then what I did was I took the layer and I just duplicated it. So say we duplicate the layer. And now if I jump back over to, let's say the icing or the base, and I can just come into here and set the color to like, it's like red, I can change it. Now, of course I need to delete the mask. So I'm just adding a new paint effect into here. I'll drag that down below. And then that's how I did my buttons. So I got something like that here. So just a really quick technique. So that's pretty much it for the gingerbread. Um, there was a couple other small techniques. And I think what I'm going to do is probably create like a more in-depth like tutorial because there were the other, some of the other techniques is you get a little bit of this kind of like distortion along the edge. And I do this little technique where I uh, create a mask and I blend it uh, with a blur. And it's, it's like a, it's a, it, it just, um, it just, it just, what it does is it like, um, it smooths out that displacement because it's displacing it straight up and it just smooths it out and makes it look even better and more realistic. Um, but I don't think we have time in the stream to go over that. Uh, I do have that covered on one of the tutorials in my YouTube channel, but like I said, I think I'm going to make a tutorial on this little whole project again. So be sure to check out that because um, I'm going to show those techniques specifically uh, because I want to save time for the rest of it. Right. Uh, so here we, we have this. And the next thing I would do is I would just do this where I do send to substance stager, and this is going to send my cookie into stager. So now let's come over to stager and take a look. So here I have a scene set up uh, with a couple of these cookies in place. And I never like to skip ahead like this. So let me just explain kind of what I've done here. So if I turn off all these layers and I just have one on, when you do the send to, like I just showcased, the cookie just comes in to, into stager like this. And so this is basically the exact same thing that I showed. And then what I did was I just moved the cookie, I rotated it, and then I literally just duplicated it a bunch of times. 
And so uh, what I created was, let's see, let me get rid of this ground plane here. Let me turn that off. Uh, and so I just moved the cookies around and in space like this uh, because I wanted to have these cookies just kind of all laying on top of each other, kind of a little, a little haphazardly, right? And um, so, but I didn't want to place them hand by hand because that's that's not fun to do that. So what you can do in Stager is use this collision tool. So for example, if I have one of these cookies selected and if I come over here to object uh, and you can do this for any object in Stager, you'll see that there's an option for collision. I had it turned on and the collider type is set to surface. And, it, and then, so I did it once and then I duplicated the cookie. So each, every single one of these guys, like if I grab this guy down here, he's, he has it on. So they're all selected and on. And then that allows me to do this. So I select all the cookies and I'll come over here to the top and turn on collision for the scene. And now I have this little toolbar, excuse me, this transform tool, and I'll move this guy. Now check it out. If I just move it, it's kind of like acting a little <laughs> crazy, but watch. If I push down and I move my mouse, it just, everybody collided on top of each other. And look at this. All the cookies are just laying on top of each other perfectly. It's pretty cool. Uh, if I go like now, if I like grab one of these guys, like say this guy, and I try to move, I can move him around. But he's moving based on, look, he'll collide into the other cookies and stuff. So it's it's pretty neat. Uh, you'll see how, it, look, you can pick him up and then watch. He'll like, bump, and he'll just fall down on the cookie. So that's a really awesome way to like set up your scene. So once I had that, I then created a camera. And that's, you just click this little camera button. It creates a camera. And now I'm viewing through the camera. So I'll just set up my shot. And I think I wanted to do something like on the object. I was doing this for like an Instagram post. So I did 1080 by 1080. And then you have your focal length you can set. So I usually try to set this, like, I like 85 millimeter lenses. So I just did something like this and, you know, just framed up a shot like we have here. Uh, okay, so let me open up another scene really quick. Uh, let's see, let's go to open recent uh, gingerbread scene. We're not gonna save that. And what I'm gonna have in this next scene is going to be like the gingerbread men all together like I just showed you, but then I have the little Christmas candy trees and I am going to show you how I did that. So once this comes in, it'll be just a second. It's loading up. Um, you'll recall here, let me jump over to illustrate it really quick. So you recall earlier that I needed these little Christmas tree candies. This was awesome. So I just grabbed the path tool and made this. Uh, and this was fun for me because I learned how to like make a shape. And then I did the, like, where I was able to mirror the shape. And then, like, you know, for me, that was neat. I've never done that in Illustrator before. So I was like, oh, cool. I, I made a mirrored shape. And then I just extruded it as an OBJ, straight out OBJ. And then with that OBJ, you could just drag and drop that here into Stager. So this is the scene that I have. Let's see. Whoops. The little bar is up at the top. Let's get that to my viewport. Okay. So let's see how I did this little tree thing. Let me show you this. So I'm going to grab one of these trees. Uh, let me turn off collision and it works like this. And I'm going to grab this other little tree. Oh, here, let me, let me do it this way. It'll be quicker. So let's see. I, what, the same thing I did was I, I grabbed a couple trees just like this. They all have collision. I duplicated it and then I moved them over like this. And then I would say, okay, let's select these guys. And I duplicated them and then just kind of moved them over maybe up a little bit so they'll collide. Okay, and then I duplicated them again and moved them over. So let's just say we, I did these a little mount here and then I'll select all of them. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab my little transform tool and let's grab this guy here and just, whoops, shoot. Sometimes it's hard to let me just move my transform here. Sorry about this. Let me just get this over into position. Just kind of, uh, yeah, checking the uh, chat as well, which I forgot to do a bit. There was one question that just came in about, can you import the file to AE and animate? Yes, absolutely you can. And it's awesome. I love After Effects. It's one of my favorite things I've been doing lately. So let me just show this really quick. So cool. Um, so you have like your, your the gingerbread guy. Check this out. You could just come over here and go send to After Effects. And you can configure it, which means like, hey, just this is where my After Effects project's going to be. The file format. Remember I was telling you guys earlier, like if you're using After Effects, you want to use a, a GLB or a GLTF. So you have that. Uh, GLB is what you'd want to use. It's basically like all the materials compiled into one file. Uh, and then you hit apply. And then here's what you do. You just do send to After Effects and it'll just send this right in your After Effects project. 
you can animate. It's going to look just like it does here in, in Painter. It's awesome. Uh, lots of stuff uh, coming in the future, some tutorials on that, but it's really, really cool. Uh, okay, so back in Stager. Uh, so then what I could do is I have these guys in place. I enabled collision and then just did the same thing. So I picked them up and I just placed them, you know, like this onto the scene uh, and then, you know, grab this little tool and I can move them around and they'll just collide around in the scene like this. So that's kind of what I did. And, oh, you can scale them too. Like, but the scale when they're in collision mode will just make them kind of explode. So I was just doing fun stuff like that. Like, oh, let me just explode them and then just place them down like that. Uh, and that's exactly how I did the little candy. It was just that quick. Uh, and then I'll jump back over to that camera, which was, this was the shot. You'll also notice in this scene that if I back out, I have this little, th what this is, is just a simple plane. And from my, where is it? Assets? Yeah, inside my starter assets, there's a plane. I just drag that in. And this wood, I just, for this wood, I jumped over to Adobe Stock and grabbed a wood. I mean, you could shoot this with your camera, grab it from anywhere. And it, it's just a texture I applied. Uh, you know what? I'm making that up. That's not what I did. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. I, I think what I did in this case, yeah, it's it's a material from, uh, I can't believe that. I forgot. I jump over here to Creative Cloud and uh, my Creative Cloud desktop, and I'm looking for wood. This is exactly what I did. I was like, oh, I found a really good wood. Like, say it's this. And I did the same thing, except I sent it into Stager. I can't believe I forgot that. And then uh, it came into Stager in my material properties, way down here at the bottom. Where is it? My material project. Oh, it's here in my projects. There it is. And I just would drag and drop it onto here. So now that that's set up and I have my light set up, you can see right here, uh, everything's in place. Then what I do is I jump over to my environment tab and look at my lights and uh, I just did my lighting. So here, let me show you how that works. You turn on the ray tracing, which is like your rendering view. And then over here in sampler, I'm sorry, stager, I go to my lights and I have a bunch of these little environment lights. Now you could make your own in sampler or you could download them from somewhere else. But what I did was I think I just went with one that we shipped with, which is this one right here, the warm key cool fill. And all I did was I click it and it grabs the light and then check this out. I can just come over here to the light where you have like rotation and I just rotate it and it'll update here in the scene. So you can see that I just rotated the light so that it looked like it was just, you know, shining, you know, in the scene. And this particular light, here's what it looks like. If I click on it, it's, it's high dynamic range. So we've got these values that are above one. And so this is actually just mimicking like a light of photography studio. And you can see that it just lights the scene really realistically, which is awesome. Um, for the little candies themselves, I, all I did was I created a material by just clicking this plus button and you can just drag the material onto the object like I did here. I did it before I uh, duplicated them everywhere to save me a lot of time. And then I went into the material and like, so for example, let's say that I wanted uh, here, I'm just like, I don't know. It's like a pink purple candy, right? So I turned that on and then I went down here to my interior and I set translucency all the way up. So now it looks like glass, but that's not what I want. I want a little subsurface scattering. So what this, it just mimics light that will actually, um, you know, go through a surface and kind of bounce around and kind of lights it up. You know, uh, that's what that's doing. And then I'll grab a scattering color and just set some values. And that's what this, this little guy looks like. And just by playing with like some of these values, like roughness and things like that, what you can get is, you know, something that looks like a hard candy or maybe something looks more like, a, um, what are those things called? A, um, a gummy bear. <laughs> yeah, it looks more chewy like a gummy bear or something. So that's what that is. So, okay, going back to my light, uh, you know, you can see here in my lights, I have that one light. Then what I did was I clicked this little plus button, which creates another little image light here at the top. And so that's what this looks like. If I turn off my, so now I have this little light. And what you can do with this one, same thing. I just increased the intensity value, rotated it, adjusted my height, things like that, just to get it to line up. And then the two lights combined gave me the lighting for my scene. And that was pretty much all I did. The next thing was I jumped over to my render tab. And then you can start to render this guy. And what I did was I rendered this out to a Photoshop file. So once I hit render, and we're going to end up right here at the very end with my scene. So what we end up getting here is, and let's just jump through a couple of these things real quick. So if we look at the additional layers, uh, if you do the Photoshop file, Stager will crank out for you some things like a depth pass, 
uh, object selection. So it just gives you a quick way to select different objects in the scene. Like if I wanted to say like, you know what, that, that tree right there, I want to select it and maybe do something with it, I can. So that's what those do. So what I did was I, I bring in my, my layer, I create a smart object from this, and then I use my camera raw filter. So this was the like the raw film, I, I like to say like exposed film from the render. And then I, I run a, a camera raw on top to, to color grade it. Uh, and then I, I just did a color lookup. And then I use this uh, plugin. I love this. It's I can't say the word right on Honoric, uh, but it's this plugin right here. I love this plugin, and it's basically just does really cool like blooms and glows and stuff like that. So it's really highly recommended, uh, and I use that to do all my glows. So this was it. That's how I finished everything up. And so uh, just kind of looking over at some questions here to see if someone was asking, does Adobe Express have the tools that Photoshop has? Um, it does have some tools that Photoshop has, of course, not all of them, but uh, it does have a few. I think there are some stuff with Gen Fill, and then it also has some things with uh, that, that I use in Adobe Express uh, for like creating like drop shadows, uh, using some color levels, the hue adjustment, stuff like that. So there's a couple little things for tweaks. Um, but with that said, uh, I think that's going to kind of end my stream here. So I just really want to thank everybody for joining me. Um, this was a really fun project. Uh, I just want to just hope everyone has a wonderful uh, holiday. And uh, seriously, if you're ever looking to get into 3D, uh, now's a great time. It's it's a lot of fun. And like I said, be sure to check out the Substance 3D channel. We have lots of tutorials. Uh, if you like, just follow me on uh, some of my channels. Uh, Instagram and, and YouTube is where I'm kind of mostly um, active. I just love talking about this stuff. So if you have questions or, or have a tutorial request or something, just let me know. I'm always happy to help people. And again, just love talking about Substance and 3D in general. So again, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, really appreciate your time and uh, have a great time off, a great uh, Christmas break coming up. and. Um, can't wait to see what you guys create. So uh, see you next time. Thanks, everyone.